they were saying in this study that um, men who help around the house with household chores yeah. um, actually have a lot more sex. I believe and that. And it's a very I sexy thing. That. It's a very <laughs> sexy thing. Our culture teaches us that it's natural to seek love. I mean, we, we grow and we look for love our whole lives. And yet, for a lot of people, it's hard to receive the love that comes their way. What do you think interferes with this? And how can we help people get more of the love that they crave in their lives? Absolutely. You know, a love problem really is a receiving problem, mm -hmm. right? Um, and the first part of that is actually um, the love that you're not giving yourself. So you actually set the bar. The, how much you love yourself mm -hmm. is how much you're allowing love in. Mm -hmm. So you truly set the bar. The universe is always gifting to us, or at least trying to, but what do people do? We block it all the time. Uh, so it's important to be in a practice, a daily practice of receiving the love that not only the universe, but people are always trying to give mm -hmm. to us. Um, and you, you know, I have a book coming out in 2015 and it's um, What is Your Love Vibration? And it's all about how to raise that vibration mm -hmm. up internally from mm -hmm. here because that's where it all, you know, begins. This is how much you're able to allow and receive that love in by raising your own internal um, set point mm -hmm. of uh, love vibration, basically. I love the idea that we set the bar for what we let in. I think that's really profound. Mm -hmm. And we love different ways. Yes. yes. Like the way that we communicate love is different. So like some people communicate with touch, you know, or communication or giving um, or doing for others. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important to know um, when you're in a relationship, how your mate expresses love. For example, my boyfriend expresses love by doing things for me. And I express love through communication and touch. And so sometimes you have to ask for what you need. Mm -hmm. And I also know that when he's taking out the trash or doing the dishes, you know, or, or uh, cutting flowers for me or whatever, or mowing the lawn, that, that he's expressing love. So when I work with my clients, I, I make sure that they understand each other's love language, is what you call it, um, so that they can ex know when someone is trying to express love to you. Because we tend to shut that off. We try to, you know, oh, he doesn't love me, you know. But, but, it, but it's not true. They, they are showing you that they love you. It's just you need to understand how they express that. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting that you say that because there was a study done on um, uh, frequency of having sex and they were saying in this study that um, men who help around the house with household chores yeah. um, actually have a lot more sex. <laughs> I believe and that. it's a very I sexy thing. That. It's a very <laughs> sexy thing for women to see their yeah. their spouse or boyfriend doing doing the dishes. So the apparently, vacuum. it's the a vacuum cleaner. It's an aphrodisiac. Really yeah. sexy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of studies done on that. But exactly. in you know, in answer to your question, the first thing that came into my mind when I thought about what's really what, what really prevents people, and I would just the word fear came into my yeah. mind, and I just think yeah. that fear is probably the biggest blockage of receiving love. That, that there is and probably the most universal um, emotion that we all fear, uh, that we all feel mm -hmm. at various times in our lives. And I think that, you know, love, as wonderful as it is, can also be experienced as very, very frightening or threatening in some way, depending on what our own life experience has been and also, you know, how somebody may be interacting with us at any given time in our lives, so. And that makes total sense because all of our choices in life are either love-based or fear-based. That's right. So when you make choices based on love and you accept love, um, you, you get love, mm -hmm. right? So you're, gonna, you're going to attract love or you're going to repel love mm -hmm. with fear. Well, love is our basic need. We come into this world, we would not survive if our parents did not love us. So sure. that's what motivates them to give to us and take care of us. There's this bond that happens. 
And so we feel the deepest, deepest need that we all have. You know, we need water, we need comfort, we need shelter, but we also need messages that say we're loved mm -hmm. because we won't survive without it. So when we feel our need for love, we're wide open. It's like, I need to know what you think of me. I need to know that you'll care of me. So it becomes our deepest fear is if I open myself up to actually let you affect me, to say, I need you. And then you say, well, I don't want to be with you. You're, you're ridiculous. You're not enough. You're unlovable. It hurts so much because that deep, deep fear gets activated. Oh my gosh, if I'm not loved, I won't survive. Mm -hmm. And that's very painful. So we tend to repress that need. Mm -hmm. So achieving the love that we crave is such a journey for people. I mean, it's almost like climbing Mount Everest. We have to tackle our fears. We have to mirror to the world what we want to bring to ourselves. And it's so hard. And yet I think the gem of the day is that if you love yourself the way you want other people to love you, that is the way that you'll achieve this great loving relationship that you really crave. That's beautiful.